in the angelic ranking in all of creation only man could reveal the dimensions of god and lucifer had perceived this thing so he wanted to enter into it i will exalt my throne above this do you see why the devil can allow you fornicate and still heal the sick because that's mundane the real powers in the spirit they are beyond healing they are men that can speak to the wind and say let the east wind come and fill the bodies and a great army can rise for such powers is not a gift it is to walk in the realm of righteousness dimensions that are hollow only mortals can wield them and so the devil has no problem with you prophesying add fornication to it because he knows that with your prophecy he will still take the city you can have congregation you can have a large member but the city belongs to him because princes don't fight for men they fight for territories it's demons that fight for men and so when princes come they are contending for the city and we will never have the power to take the city until we know the way of righteousness that's why no man can stand up and banish the sons of the bondwoman but in the days of Samuel he says so long as Samuel lived he said the hand of God was perpetually against the Philistine. Samuel didn't need to pray. So long as he was breathing, no bandit can come close to Zion. Because if you try it, you will be converted. Did you not read about Saul? When he came to arrest Samuel, the moment he touched the borders of Nayot in Ramah, the Bible said he prophesied naked from night until morning because the hand of God was a defense. But check those men. The power they wielded was not an anointing. It was called righteousness. When Samuel was old, he stood before Israel. He said, let one of you accuse me. Let one man, one. I've never taken a lamb from you. I've never robbed any of you. I've never withheld anything from you. Let one man accuse me. And not one man in Israel could stand up and say something against him. And when they didn't have an accusation, he showed us the display of righteousness. And he said, this is dry season. He said, but now, let the cloud pour down. And rain began to fall in dry season. There are powers in the spirit that is superior to a gift. Those are the garments of righteousness. And until the bride of Christ grows into her stature in righteousness, we cannot say to the devil, hold your peace. When you finish your work, don't be left with a gift. Your gift will be corrupt. It will become a monument. Leave the earth with the garment of righteousness. Because even when Jesus returns on the white horse, he said those who will come with him, he said they are without spot. Because their garments have been washed in the blood. It is righteousness that gave them stature in Zion. And so when you grow from the realms of righteousness, you will come to a higher realm. That realm is called the realm of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. When you enter the realm of the fear of the Lord, God begins to give you keys in the spirit. That means you become a custodian. What God wants to do is that he begins to hide dimensions with you and in you. So you have the power to unlock things and to close them. That was the realm Daniel was operating in, in Babylon. When they told them to eat anything they want, they said Daniel and his friends refused to be defied with the portion of the king's meat. The reason is because they feared God. They feared the Lord. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they said, we will not be careful to answer you in this matter. We fear God more than your throne. And the king said, make the fire seven times hotter. They were not moved. They were so bound by the fear of the Lord that they became prisoners of God. And when God was working with Daniel at the latter age of his life, he told him, seal the book. I've given you the power to hide things and even angels can't find them. He said, seal it. Lock the book. The person that came to unlock the book was Paul the apostle. That was why Paul said, 
it is given to me the mysteries and I have the power to make men see the things that were locked for aeons I have entered the rank where Daniel operated I can unlock the mysteries and this is why Paul became the custodian of the mysteries of Christ because those mysteries were revealed to Daniel remember when Daniel was sojourning with God he said I saw he saw the courts of heaven open and he said he saw one that looked like the ancient of days his hair was white as wool God was showing him the powers that the Christ will reveal but when it was not the time God now told Daniel to lock it nobody could unlock it until Paul showed up and when Paul showed up he opened the mysteries of Christ and anybody can tap into Paul in order to access those mysteries it was Paul that taught us what the church is it was Paul that taught us what it meant to be a witness it was Paul that taught us who we are in Christ all of those mysteries were locked Daniel locked it Paul came to unlock it and the reason is because Paul was a man that trembled at God when Paul was going to Jerusalem he said I go to Jerusalem bound in the spirit so even if it doesn't please him so long as he pleases the master Paul was willing to do it he had entered mystery and that mystery is not only to write scriptures and that's why I'm sharing these things that mystery made Paul invincible Paul spoke and he said terrible things he said a day and a half I was in the deep Paul fell into the ocean and they didn't find him until one and a half day when they removed him he was alive so Paul was like an amphibian he could, he could operate on earth and he could operate in the belly of the sea you couldn't kill him because of what? he had mysteries those mysteries were so ingrained that he made him to become anything under any circumstance he said I can abound I can abase I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me because of the realm of the fear of the Lord the mysteries of God open hope you know that Psalm 25 verse 14 the Bible said the fear of the Lord the, it said the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him not with them that pray not with them that fast the secrets of God is with them that fear him he will show them his covenants that's why Paul said we are the servants of Christ therefore we are the stewards of the mysteries of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 he became a custodian and so Paul was so powerful that Paul was bold enough to tell the church in Ephesus he said when I leave you he said wolves ravenous wolves will come you know what Paul was saying that was the same prayer Jesus prayed for his disciples he said all that you have given me I have kept none has been lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled the same power Jesus had to protect the church that was the power Paul carried and he said so long as he was in Ephesus nothing could happen to the church he said but the moment he departs he said wolves will come into their rank that means Paul was a guardian because of the access to mysteries that he had you couldn't penetrate the church when Paul was around and that was not read in the book he said the message I preach I was not taught of any man he said when he pleased the father who separated me from my mother's womb to reveal Christ in me I confessed not with flesh and blood I went to Arabia all they taught us is human connection that's why we are weak the ways of Babylon how to manipulate men and build relationship that's all they taught us they will tell you make sure you call once in a week and when you are visiting take a gift and then you see Christians operating in mundane wisdom wisdom that is built on selfishness and self-centeredness when somebody needs you he packages something and he presents it as if he's honoring you that's what they taught us and that's how they taught us to manage relationship but in the word of Paul they built relationship in the spirit he said, I went to Jerusalem by revelation. Galatians 2 verse 2. I went by revelation. After 14 years, that was when God told him, now meet Peter. It wasn't a manipulative relationship for acceptance, for visibility, or for validation. 
he went by revelation because their own relationship is born in the spirit they had enough power not just to be protected but to guard the people if Paul comes to our midst here nothing can happen to us the same way Jesus is in our midst nothing will happen Paul can come like that did you not read what he said he said concerning virgins I have no commandment from the Lord he said but I'm found to be trustworthy and so what he said became scriptures how can the Holy Ghost not inspire you and you write something and it becomes scripture because it was functioning in the realm of the fear of the Lord and so long as you operated in that realm the secrets of God are with you that's why I began by telling you it's not every challenge you use faith some challenges you need discernment some challenges you need secrets so that you will be 10 steps ahead of the enemy it's not every battle you fight you will waste your arsenals there are some battles that mysteries and secrets will cause you to avoid but if you don't have these things you will waste yourself and he said the labor of the foolish wearies every one of them because they know not how to enter the city the labor of the foolish and when you leave the realm of the fear of the Lord then you come to the sixth realm it's called the realm of the knowledge of the holy that's where God commits to you the powers of eternal life because knowledge is not for you to increase in fact when your knowledge is fact it says your mind will be puffed knowledge actually brings liberty he said you shall know the truth the truth shall make you free and knowledge actually transform you we all with open faces beholding us in the glass the image of the Lord we are changed so the knowledge of the holy turns you to become a visible expression of the invisible God because that's what God created let us make man in our own image and in our likeness but you can never come to that level except as you migrate from the realm of mercy through the realm of love into the realm of grace and then you come to the realm of righteousness you come to the realm of the fear of the Lord and then you come to the realm of the knowledge of the holy these are the things that give the church her true power and that's why when the devil attacks us what he attacks are the things that prevents us from making progress in the spirit when he said the part of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day it's not that today you didn't have money tomorrow you have money next tomorrow you buy a house you now buy a car and you say i'm growing that's mundane no it's not that's not the part of the just that's the part of a wise businessman but when christianity is watered down we judge our value system by the standard that the world gives. If that is your own part of the just, that means that will take, we buy your whole in <laughs> You move into depths and dimensions in God until you come to a point where when they see you, they see him. That's where Jesus operated. In the realm of the knowledge of the holy. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the father. That's my greatest asset. If you have seen me, and because he has become like the father, everything the father can do, he can also do. You now discover that the things men pursue will become a byproduct. That's why testimonies are not necessarily cast. We say that to encourage people so that we can appreciate God's benevolence. But beyond that, testimonies are the level of access you have in the spirit. Because when you are in the spirit, the material world will respond. The material world was designed to respond to the spiritual world. I said that to let you know that God is known in his judgment. If you stop at the realm of grace, you don't know God. You will have to come to the realm of righteousness. That's why he said in 1 John 3.10 Little children, 
let no man deceive you. 3.7. He said, him that doeth righteousness is righteous. And in 1 John 3.10, he said, him that is born of God, sinneth not. It's not just I'm forgiving. It's that as he is, so am I, or I am in this world. You move from the realm of righteousness to the realm of the fear of the Lord. And then you come to the realm of the knowledge of the holy. You really have the mind of Christ. You think what he thinks. And you live as though Christ was the one living through you. Which is actually the reality. And in Galatians 2.20, Paul made us understand that he attained that realm. Say, the life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God that died for me. God is known not just in his benevolence. God is also known in his judgments. I can assure you that more than 90% of the believers of this age, they don't know God in his judgments. That's why our world is lawless. Many pastors don't know God in his judgments. The reason is because the messages they are even preaching now are the messages they recycled from a century ago. It's what E.W. Kenyon taught, that Kenny Hagin taught. That's what all of them are teaching to date. People have not pressed deeper and say, Father, open virgin dimensions to us. And when we catch the revelation of Kenny Hagin, catch the revelation of E.W. Kenyon, and cripples begin to walk, blind eyes begin to see, we now build Babel. We migrate from Zion. We enter into Babel. We are supposed to start from those revelations. But God is a movement. It's a river that will never end. It's a river we keep exploring because there is a heritage of knowledge that is left for our generation. All of us read those books. But the body of Christ is going forward. And now we have known enough of the benevolence of God. It's time to know God in his judgment. When you read the writings of Paul, you will discover that the ratio of grace to works is about 65 is to 35. When you go to Revelation, the ratio of grace to work is about 20 to 80. Because as you migrate towards the end of time, the value system it's not just what God did for you. It's not what you can do for God. Because while he's dealing with us individually, he's also dealing with us as a body. Now, having established this foundation, let me show you the 12 layers of the spirit realm. That's my message. You see, we can't teach the word of the Lord. We can't teach it. Because if you even begin to talk the heavy matters, you will lose your audience. They, they will not know where you are going to. Because all they are used to is give, it shall be given unto you. Good measures, press down, shake it together. And you see, Christians, <laughs> all our giving is bargain. When they need them to pray, isha basha, isha basha. somebody is in the hospital. The moment they discharge the person, they will wrap their altar and go and keep it till the next day problem comes. <laughs> You see somebody, ah, 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 is looking for a wife. The moment he catches the gaze of that lady, the next thing he's in Dubai, snapping like this. There's nothing wrong with those things. I went for honeymoon to so. But I'm trying to let you know there are deeper things. And you know, Sometimes they are hard to teach. Oh, they are hard. That's why we break, you know, the way people should sit in church, it's not just a large congregation. It's according to generations. When you check Israelites, when they moved, they either sat, they sat according to their tribes, and in the tribe, they sat according to their generations. When church really becomes interested in establishment we can't be 10,000 in one audience who will you talk to there are those you can say strong things to and there are those that you need to say 
little, little things too. Because we are in different generations in the spirit. That's why sometimes you hear us preach. Where we touch some strong meat, we will now come back and explain smaller matters. And people will hear you and say, ah, this man has lost it. You don't preach what you know. You preach based on your audience. If I meet young believers, I can't be telling them keep deep kingdom matters. They don't even know the benevolence of God. You start talking judgment. They will, they will leave you and go home. But people just sit on the internet, cross their leg, and be marking where you are in your walk with God. The other one saw me the other, wrote on the other day and said, the kind of people this man is mingling with, he will soon fall into error. I laughed. Me, I know my calling. I'm not a pastor. I'm a revivalist. I'm sent to the body. The good, the bad, and the ugly. When I meet the good, I strengthen their faith. When I meet the bad, I convict them by the word. When I meet the ugly, I bring the judgment of God until they repent. It's church organization that people create different factions. I'm not a factionist person. I'm sent to the body. That's why Jesus saw Zacchaeus. He said, come down. Today I'm coming to your house. Tomorrow you see Jesus in a banquet with the Pharisees. Banquet. The worst set of people in the damn world were tax collectors and Pharisees. They looked at him. They said, he's a friend of publicans. This is a fake prophet. When the harlot came and poured perfume on his leg, they said, ah, if he's a prophet, he should have known that this is a harlot. Jesus said, those who are well don't need a doctor. It is those who are sick that need doctor. I know my calling. I'm a revivalist. I'm not a pastor. If I'm a pastor, I'll go and look for the people that preach my kind of message. I'm sent to the body. That's why we mingle with genuine people. We also mingle with fake people. We are the sort of the body. If we create faction, some people will be lost forever. And they will not just be lost. Their congregation will be lost. So if I enter the camp of the fake people, even if they refuse to repent, because not everybody Jesus met repented. Zacchaeus repented. Judas never repented. But even if they choose to, choose not to repent, at least some of their followers will hear us and they will know that what their papa is saying is fake. <laughs> That's why we mingle with everybody. And so if you think we will lose our calling by mingling with people, you have not seen anything. Because this man talking here, I can even enter a herbally shrine. The Christianity of self-preservation, you want to preserve your name and be a good person. Some of us don't have a name. We are called apostles. That's our work. And if you think that I don't know Jesus enough, that I meet a fake prophet or a fake believer and he will convert me, then I need to stop preaching and go back. That means I didn't graduate from the school of the spirit. I didn't graduate. If a man can still change me, my encounters are fake. But if my encounters are not fake and you think because of preserving my name, I will create factions, I'm not part of those people. I am sent to the body. I strengthen the genuine I convict the fake and we judge the diabolic because Jesus feasted with Zacchaeus he feasted with the Pharisees he carried prostitutes as his disciples and even the son of perdition followed him till he died some look at you you preach a strong message today they now hear another message they say Kai this man is no longer preaching the message we know him for. Ah! I'm a traveler. I'm an itinerant preacher. I can go to a place today and I see strong believers and we talk deep matters. I will go to another place tomorrow and I'll find only babes. I will give them what they can handle. You are online hearing all the messages. You don't know that I preach one in Jalingo. I preach the other one in Meduguri and I preach the other one in Enugu. I'm not talking to the same people. That's why you hear Paul, you hear John. At one point, they say, if you sin, ask for forgiveness. 
At another point, he said, if you sin, Jesus will ask for forgiveness for you. At another point, he said, we don't sin. You now hear one person saying three different things. You say, this is contradiction. No. He's talking to different levels of maturity. And that's why the apostles are called wise master builders. I can go to a congregation and tell them, whatever you do, God has forgiven you. I will see a mother and say, God has forgiven and forgotten. Come to the Lord. That's what we do on crusade ground. But when we come to discipleship ground, we will tell you that in the world to come, but if you carry the word to come to a crusade ground, they will go home. So you that is on the internet, judging those who are accurate and those who are fake, why not go to the mission field for one year? I just came back from Jalingo. My whole body is aching. We ministered fire and brimstone this morning in Jalingo. And then we came back. Meanwhile, I flew six hours overnight from London to Abuja two days ago. The next day I went to Jalingo. Today I'm here. Tomorrow I'm going to Milan. Sometimes you stand up in the morning, your waist is like this. <laughs> you can't bend well. Meanwhile, we are young. This is when we should carry our yoke. He said, bear your yoke in your youth. <laughs> because very soon, when you are 50, you can't do anything again. Then you consolidate. So the spirit realm and spiritual realities are deep. Twelve layers of the spirit realm. This place, there is maturity here. So let's say some things. You know what I'm trusting God for? That a governor, in the days when God raises our horn, a governor can lead prayers. And people will fall under the anointing. A governor. Prayer is not for the poor. It's for everybody. Priesthood is not for preachers. It's for everybody. Because without priesthood, there can be no kingship. Your kingship operates on your priesthood. That's why we are called priests and kings. My prayer is that we will grow to a level where a senator will come. We will not just usher them to sit in front. No. When we need to do impartation, a senator will lay hands on people and they will be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Everyone will be strong. Let me list them in case I don't finish. So that you will go and do your study. There are 12 orders in the spirit realm. The first is that the spirit realm is a legalistic realm. That means it is a realm governed by laws. If you are lawless, you have no place there. You are a victim on arrival. Number two, the spirit realm is a realm of secrets. You can open a door now in the spirit realm and enter. When you open the same door and come back, you are in another world. You are the only one that thinks the door is parallel. Different realms are mingled. You can take one step in the spirit realm and when you look, it will be 50 years. You take the same step backward. You think you came back to where you left. When you look, it will be 90 years into the past. You now come back to where you look now to see what you were seeing. You will still go to the past. So you can be going forward and going to the past and going backward and going forward. It's a mingled and intermingled realm. That's why you can't master God. What you did today, did tomorrow, you now say, I found a formula. The third time you do it, you fail. Because every time you operate, the only governor of that realm is the Holy Ghost. He's the one to tell you that match here is stone. You may see stone, and as you march, it's a river. That's why I told Moses, talk to the rock. The rock was a river. That's the spirit realm. Is guided by secret, guarded by secret. Number three, the spirit realm is a realm of thrones. That means we are not the same. If you are arrogant, a prince sitting on a higher throne can lock you out for a season. What you command is a function of the throne you are operating from. And I will show you scriptures. I just want to list it. Number four, 
The spirit realm is a realm of life and death. It is run and ruled by life and death. And so everything you are doing in that realm, you are either giving expression to life or you are giving expression to death. I can be talking here and talking intelligently, but everything I'm saying is death. You will hear me and fall into fornication. You can hear me and fall into immorality. You can hear me and bad luck will come on you. And it's also possible if I'm functioning with life, you will hear me and the power of immorality will break. Not because you try to discipline yourself. You can also hear me and you will just step into favor. What was standing for 12 years will just change in two weeks. Not because you are praying, but life was being emitted. That's why Jesus said, the words I speak. He said, they are spirit and they are life. And the words, the words, Satan speak. They are spirit and death. That's how the spirit realm works. And that's why I say life and death is in the power of the tongue. He said, they that love each other, eat the fruit thereof. So it's a realm of life and death. Number five, the spirit realm is a realm of sounds. Sounds. The vehicle of transport in the natural can be a Lamborghini. But in the spirit, the vehicle of transport is sound. When you hear sound, the spirit is moving. He said, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they heard the sound as of a rushing mighty wind. Suddenly, the Holy Ghost fell upon them. So he traveled on sound. The Bible said, at the end of time, he said, the Son of Man shall descend with a shout. So that shout is not screaming. It's a transport model. And he said they will descend with the voice of the archangel. And he said in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. So what will take us to heaven is a sound. So every sound you hear in the spirit carries something. That's why you can hear some sound. You now hear that sound. After you hear it for a while, that sound will transport you to immorality. You will hear a sound after a while. That sound will transport you to depression. You will hear a sound after a while. That sound will transport you to violence. Those days when we used to watch football. When you come into the Champions League. There is a sound that high neck Designed from Hades. From the pit of hell. The, the, the sound is, a, is an afflictor of the soul. If you like, be in the prayer room. If that Champions League match is 8 o'clock, the moment is 7 10, you will start hearing. Tan, 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 tan. You will fall from Zion. You will fall down from your prayer out. <laughs> if you are not in that match, you will start seeing the vision of the match. The sound came from Hades. It bound us to football for many years. You are the one who thinks a sound is for entertainment. You are mobilizing demons. And you can also mobilize angels by sound. That's why in heaven, 247, there are sounds playing. Because angels are worshipping and they are moving. The motions of that realm functions on sound. I was teaching the other day, I told them. They say, BB Niger. And somebody will own it from morning to night for three months. Even your child that is six months old, those sounds are entering him. Their vibrations, energy is entering him. You will not know who will teach him how to watch pornography at the age of five. You will use all the koboko that is in this world. What you don't know is that you mobilize spirit into him. Because a spirit doesn't need to talk to travel. They will inject themselves into you and bind you for years. Sound. Why do you think when they produce a good sound in your direction, you smile? And when they say a wrong sound, your mood changes immediately. You think sounds are not spiritual. It's a realm of sound. The operations of spirit travel on sounds. Number six is a realm of light. And I told you already, authority is a function of light. The level of access a man carries is a product of the light that he commands. When God showed up and spoke to Job, he said, declare now if you have understanding. 
He said, where were you when I formed the foundation of the earth? The boundary of the ocean. That means the authority that God used to put earth in order was a product of light. And he asked Job, if you think you have understanding, speak. He said, can you talk to lightning? And they will come to you and say, here we are. He said, do you know where darkness dwells? He was showing Job the kinds of authority that he wields because of the light where he dwells. And he said, if you think you can do it, where is your own light? Where is your own understanding? The moment a man catches light, he catches authority. Number seven, the spirit realm is a realm of thoughts. Communication in that realm is higher on the frequency of thought than it is with words. Words are highly limited. You can speak in one direction per time, but your thought can speak in diverse direction. You can be thinking of somebody and while you are thinking of that person, you are seeing the image of that person. You are also seeing what you want to do to that person. You are also seeing what will happen to that person when you are done doing what you want to do to that person. So thought can operate different dimensions at the same time. Words can't do that. Words are monodimensional. Thoughts are multifaceted. There are multiple dimensions allocated to talk and so when you go to the spirit realm because they don't want limitation they take words out they use thought to communicate that's how it works and you cannot even speak correctly except as your thought goes to work first it is superior to what runs and they say God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think that means the same way God responds to your words he responds to your thought. Number eight, the spirit realm is a realm of faith. You move things in that realm not because you have muscles. Your muscle in the spirit realm is your faith. A man who has no faith is defeated in that realm because that realm, God collects things that be not as though they are. That means your faith is what brings things to bear. If your faith is not there, you will have no stake in that realm. And this is why we hear the word of God. Because we want to build our faith quickly. That realm was built by faith. And that's why he said, by faith, the elders obtain a good, a good report. Number eight. Number nine. The spirit realm is a realm of love. The only way you can express yourself in that realm is either by love or by wickedness. When you speak, when you give, it's all an expression of the language either of love or of wickedness. That's how the realm works. If you are in the dimension of God, the realm is governed by love. I was speaking to one of my sons yesterday. God is using him to do mighty things. He will jump online like this. And say something violently. And somebody reached me. He said, those of you young ladies that are coming here looking for husband, I'm not available. If that's why you came, get out. And then the next thing, you'll see him praying for people on the road. I say, God, this is not the spirit of Christ. You don't have the right to talk because you have a tongue. There are three laws that governs your speech in this kingdom. Number one, you speak words that are full of grace. You say, let thy words be what? Full, seasoned with grace. Number two, he says, speaking the truth in love. You speak in love. And number three, he said, Peter, filled with the spirit, stood up and spoke. You speak by the spirit of faith. If there is no love, and if there is no grace in your words, your faith becomes arrogance. That's how the spirit realm works. When you want to speak to somebody, put yourself in that person's shoe, find out, if he hears it, how will he feel first? Before you have the right to say it. There are times when the Holy Ghost comes judgmentally. 
But because it comes from love, people will be edified or they will be convicted. But if it's not the Holy Ghost, you will destroy people's personalities. And when God gives you authority, it's worse. The spirit realm is a realm of love. If you are not walking in love, you are walking in wickedness. Oh, <laughs>